I wanted to take a moment to update you on the town of Smyrna's continued preparation of the COVID-19 or coronavirus. This pandemic has reached our state and the town of Smyrna. We are moving at an extremely rapid pace to try to mitigate the impact and to keep us all safe here in Smyrna. Like each of you, I'm very concerned about this situation and I want to continue to communicate as transparently as possible and let you all know that your safety is absolutely our top priority. The Town of Smyrna supports Executive Order Number 17 issued by Governor Bill Lee yesterday morning. We'll work with the Governor's Office to enforce this order. Governor Lee's executive order calls for businesses across the state to utilize alternative business models beginning at midnight on Monday, March 23rd until midnight, April the 6th. The order also outlines ways businesses and citizens should work to protect vulnerable populations. The executive order number 17 prohibits social gatherings of 10 or more people and also enacts the following provisions regarding restaurants, bars, and similar food and drink establishments. Establishments are to exclusively offer drive-through, takeout, or delivery options to support families, businesses, and the food supply chain during this emergency. Establishments may sell alcohol by takeout or delivery with the purchase of food in closed containers to those who are age 21 and up. Gyms and fitness exercise centers or substantially similar facilities are to temporarily close and suspend in-person services until April the 6th. In the interim, these businesses are encouraged to pursue digital programming if possible. The order also pursues additional measures to keep vulnerable populations such as the elderly and those with underlying conditions safe. Visitations to nursing homes, retirement homes, and long-term care or assisted living facilities is now limited to visits involving essential care only. Businesses are encouraged to enact policies that take extra steps to assist vulnerable populations by considering measures such as shopping hours exclusive from the general public. Joining me today is Dr. Eric Shuck, Chief Medical Officer and Emergency Room Director at Stonecrest Hospital right here in Smyrna. Dr. Shuck, thank you so much for joining us. Now, I'll be honest with you, most of the time when I have people in my office, I'm over on the other side, sitting right beside them. But because of social distancing, um, we are making sure we put that into practice today. So um, I wanted to get your take on why you think that each of us need to adhere to Governor Lee's executive order. Well, thanks, first of all, for having me. I love the opportunity anytime to be able to share information with folks. I mean, that's what I do every day with patients and providers. Um, I thought the, the uh, Governor Lee's order was re very well written and very appropriate. The whole social distance piece, I think people, I think they kind of have a common sense idea that, that keeping distance helps you, you know, avoid a cold or flu, but there's some real medicine behind it. There's been studies that look at the distance of which, you know, respiratory droplets and coughs will transmit. And clearly, if you're in that six foot range or beyond, that is really the best way to reduce your risk for any kind of uh, disease that's transmitted that way. So I think the real focus is knowing the why behind it, that it will reduce your risk. Uh, and the piece of the social distancing, which has become like the biggest term I see on the internet now, uh, is so critical is that there's been good data over the last 20 years, but solidified in the last year around how important it is to reduce transmission by staying apart from each other. And that means, again, all the things that Dr. That, uh, excuse me, Governor Lee, Dr. Lee, Governor <laughs> Lee um, uh, clearly you know, indicated in a statement about the places we go every day and we appreciate the socialization for uh, that we need to avoid in order to reduce transmission of this basically naive virus to our community and to the health of humans. So some of the things that we've been hearing or had people ask I know you've been getting the same question, so can you just talk a little bit about our daily lives and what we need to be doing in regards to this virus? Well, first and foremost, I think folks have probably memorized a lot of this stuff, but at least I hope they have, but the whole issue about how this virus is transmitted, so the personal things you're doing about the hand washing and hand hygiene, whether it's a 60% alcohol mixture or good soap and water for at least 20 seconds, those are critical things, avoidance of touching your face, because we know that this droplet, you know, the droplet issue of transmission is as important, if not more, than the respiratory piece. So if you're, you know, doing good hand washing or not, and then you're touching your face or your eyes, clearly there's been pretty good evidence around transmission so we've got to be washing our hands or using alcohol sanitizer regularly. 
the piece of the, from a social perception, uh, perspective, these things we take for granted, going to, to, uh, to stores, going to gyms, going to restaurants, which I, you know, is, is, is the only thing we really have with all the social media we have, that's the way we socialize as humans. Those are things we're just gonna be, it's gonna be a challenge, but we have to avoid uh, at all costs. Because again, there's been good research coming out of China, out of South Korea and other places where they cordoned off towns and reduced and basically shut down all, so, all social interaction with these places. That really helped them contain and mitigate the disease spread. And as of right now, the state of Tennessee has not done that. It is just that the gyms and restaurants are closed down. So if someone does have to go out to um, the grocery store or to the pharmacy or to the doctor, what things do they need to be doing when they're out at those locations? Well, that's exactly right. So I think we're, we're in a good place right now following Governor Lee's recommendations, I think based on the number of cases we have, transmission. So things they wanna do still is to keep that six foot distance. Uh, the whole issue of wearing masks, there's a lot of controversy around that. Certainly things like PAPRs or N95s are not necessary for the general public. Level ones, I think if you're immune compromised, have history of cancer, uh, are elderly, uh, really anything that would put your immune system at a compromise than a level one, which is a typical mask, it, it's not something that anyone should be yelled at for wearing. It's not something that's being called for. But the social distancing piece is key. The other thing is making sure you are washing your hands or using that alcohol sanitizer. Um, the other piece of this that is mentioned is the issue about monitoring yourself for symptoms. I mean, when you see signs of or symptoms, especially around fever, cough that's persistent or shortness of breath, that's maybe an indicator. It's an indicator you have some type of infectious process, or it could be an allergy. But if there's any fever involved, it's not allergy. And those people need to be making sure they're seeking some type of care if their symptoms are severe. And that care would be either getting in touch with their primary care physician or calling the health department? Exactly. Those are your first steps. If it's mild to moderate illness, as much as we in the ER love to take care of patients and want to take care of the sickest patients, we really are recommending and mandating that you call your PCP first or call the public health department and get some feedback and direction. They're giving very good advice um, to stay home unless your illness, again, we're there for you if you're sick, if you're really having shortness of breath, breathing difficulties, fevers that are not resolving over a couple days or getting worse, then we're there for you to take care of you. Because coming into the ER, if you're not sick enough to be there, then you could pick up something else. That's correct. That's correct. And so we want to make sure people know that we are there to take care of them if they need us. But the best bet if their symptoms are mild to moderate would be to stay home and get care by phone or through telemedicine. Okay. Um, there have been um, a few questions about the difference between um, assessment and testing for the actual virus. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. That's a great question. Um, I think a lot of folks, even early in this a few weeks ago, a lot of providers and staff were kind of mixing these two terms up. Assessment means we're actually assessing for risk. And that risk assessment has, has evolved and changed over the last few weeks. Initially, if it was, you'd been traveling to China, to Iran, to Israel, any of these areas, South Korea, that were endemic already or were in the middle of pandemic, that was considered major risk coupled to fever and or cough and or shortness of breath. Because now we are moving to more of an endemic situation in the United States where we're seeing breakouts all over the country, the travel issue and travel history is not as important. The exposure history is key. Clearly, if you've been exposed to somebody you know has COVID-19, that is another risk factor. So that's assessment. We assess you for possible testing and or treatment. Testing, we know, has been relatively limited in many states, including here. And there's a lot of dis disconnect between epidemiology and the frontline providers over the value of testing. If you don't have a drug that necessarily can treat COVID-19, the question is, why would you test? So again, the take-home message still, if it's mild to moderate, if we, even if you get called and you do assessment by phone, does not mean you need to be seen by a provider. You should still stay home and practice appropriate practice at home. So if I thought I had it and I called my provider or I called the health department, just because I had the symptoms doesn't mean I'm always going to get a test. Is that what I'm understanding? That is correct. That is 100% correct. Okay. We're looking more for folks that have moderate to severe symptoms or greater. That, would be, that, would, that allows the physician or the nurse or provider to make a good decision about the need for testing. Again, that's the guideline as we stand today. We're hoping, all of us, that from a, from a tracking perspective that we will have more testing available. But as it stands, even over the last 30 years, looking at influenza outbreaks, testing itself really has not ever really had any major impact on treatment or mitigation. Um, it does help us track. 
Okay. Um, another concern that I've heard is, are there enough tests in Rutherford County? And I know you may not be able to answer that, but I just want to assure people that there are tests in Rutherford County if tests are needed to be given. Absolutely. Okay. Um, all the major health systems have come together. We're pooling our resources. HCA, you know, has, a, has a, one of the most sophisticated supply chain systems in the world for healthcare. And so it's, what's amazing through this whole process and crisis is to see all these amazing people and experts and brains come together, especially you know, around the Nashville area, uh, to come together and figure out how can we get this test as quickly as we possibly can. We are amassing that amount of tests over time and we're restricting them to the folks that really need that testing. So the tests do exist, they're out there okay. um, in various venues. What can we as a town and citizens of the town of Smyrna do to support you all and your peer, peers in the healthcare industry right now? I think you know, the indirect thing we talk about the most is as citizens is to take care of yourself and your families. Wash your hands regularly. Avoid you know, the six foot, keep that six foot radius as much as you can. Only leave your home for things that are truly essential and think through that when you're doing that, especially around people that may already be sick or have cancer, friends and family. That in itself will indirectly support us greatly because it will restrict our ability, it will keep, it will allow us to really be focused on taking care of the sickest patients, the elderly and folks that are immune compromised. Dr. Shuck, one of the questions that um, I've had citizens ask me is, what happens if someone in my family gets sick, my spouse, my child, what do we need to do at, within our household? Sure, that's a really great question. So the first step would be definitely to contact your health care provider. That would be a step possibly to take. Uh, the protocols are really the same in that if you really think that your child or your spouse is ill, if it's mild to moderate symptoms really, you can monitor them at home, treat their fever, give fluids. Um, there's no need to seek medical care at that point. Uh, the quarantine process, if you read the CDC's guidelines, are pretty clear. Also, you want to basically stay home and keep your spouse or child home, whoever may be positive. But also, during that time period, before the, your spouse or child develops symptoms, they're still incubating the virus. So that means you as the other spouse may have already been or likely has been exposed. So really as a family, you really have to think about quarantining and following Governor Lee's guidelines and, and, and only looking, sending that one person who's not symptomatic out for essential things. Is there a need to actually, if I'm diagnosed or if someone is diagnosed within my household, does that person need to quarantine to um, a separate bedroom or a separate place in the house or have we already probably at that point all been exposed and we all just need to quarantine? It's really the latter. I have to say that a lot of folks feel like they should, that they, if, if their spouse or rest of their family is completely well, they feel safer to be quarantined. So I think most of us, the common sense would be to still kind of hang away from the rest of the family as much as you can, it will reduce that risk a little bit. The fact that you're in the same household though and you've spread this to surfaces for 10 days prior, it makes it a lot, it makes, makes the quarantine within your home almost unvaluable. Okay. Invaluable. Um, the other piece is um, initially when we were hearing about um, the disease in other places that we were hearing mainly the elderly were the ones coming down with this. Can you talk a little bit about the age range? Because I think we're seeing now different things here in the United States. Absolutely. And I think some of that data was skewed because some of the countries it was coming out of, even specifically Italy, is a very elderly population in Italy in general. So they, they looks like what you're seeing when you see this come across your screen is that there's higher death rates. In fact, here locally, we're seeing a, over 50% of the cases, positive cases, not deaths, are in that 18 to 34 year old age group of, in folks that get the disease, are tested, and then resolve completely and recover. The point being that those folks are still the most active in the population. Those are the ones that really need to be following those same quarantine guidelines and, and social distancing that Governor Lee is ref referring to because they are the carriers uh, as well as they are to the rest of the population, to those, to the elderly grandmother or to the young premature infant. Uh, pr even with pregnancy, we're still looking into the data around pregnant moms and what impact it may have since swine flu had a greater impact. So the key thing with that group is that is the number one group we're seeing for positive, positive COVID in this region. Um, these are folks that are otherwise well and are resolving on their own but need to follow the same social distancing and staying home to avoid contact with other folks who may be at risk. With so many children home from school right now, um, whether it be small children all the way up through teenagers, is it a good idea to have play dates or for older children to get together and see each other at this time? 
Uh, definitely no. So again, kind of harking back to our discussion of the 18 to 34 year olds, especially when you talk about school age and above, these are your really healthy people, generally, who are the most likely to be carriers. There'll be minimal symptoms. So the answer remains the same. They are still vectors. They can still carry to each other. And then that child can go back home to their family where grandma's living and expose grandma. And just from a perspective of how viruses spread, when you bring people together and they share, then they go back and they, and it's just, if you look at the, the map, behind it, it's exponential, the increase in transmission. So my prescription would be on a pad would be FaceTime. For anybody who's thinking about socializing, that's the best thing they could possibly do right now and stay home. So um, just like with the town of Smyrna, those at Stonecrest are saying your best place is to stay at home where you are safe as much as possible and only venture out when it's needed. Um, thank you so much for being with us today. I can't tell you how much we appreciate you and um, all of the healthcare staff. Um, we know that this is a trying time for you all, and we just want you all to know that you all have our support and our prayers as well. Thank you. I really appreciate that. You know, we are so fortunate to have two state-of-the-art healthcare facilities right here in Rutherford County. You have St. Thomas Rutherford in Murfreesboro and Stonecrest right here in the town of Smyrna. I can't tell you how grateful we are for the commitment and sacrifice of the healthcare professionals serving in our communities. The Department of Health's website is www.tn.gov backslash health. This website is updated daily and is a great resource for accurate information and state resources. The Centers for Disease Control's website, www.coronavirus.gov, is an excellent source of comprehensive, accurate, and current information. The Town of Smyrna's social media pages, website, and local Channel 3 are also great sources of information. We share information from the Health Department, CDC, and local information, including an archive of our COVID-19 press releases. The Tennessee Department of Health encourages anyone that has questions or is experiencing symptoms to call your primary care provider. If you do not have a primary care provider, please call the Rutherford County Health Department. Remember that if you have any general questions about coronavirus, please call the Tennessee Department of Health's information line at 1-877-857-2945. We encourage you to continue to follow the CDC guidelines to slow the spread of the virus. Stay home if you're sick. If you have sick family members in your home, stay home with them. Cover coughs and sneezes. Wash your hands frequently and for more than 20 seconds. Use hand sanitizer with 60% or more alcohol. Clean and disinfect your home and work areas routinely. And practice social distancing, intentionally staying away at least six feet from other people. While we're all afraid during this time, we cannot let fear win. We are a resilient country, a resilient state, county, and especially a town. I know that we will face the challenges ahead as a united front, and we will come out stronger than ever. On behalf of the Smyrna Town Council, Town Manager Brian Hercules, and our personnel here at the Town of Smyrna, thank you so much for trusting us to continue to serve you. You are our number one priority.